Right now, I think we have a, a an unusual special guest, and I'm, uh, his name is Leo Doyle, and he lives in California. And I'm going to give Ernie the screen to introduce Leo. Yes, uh, Leo is a, a very long and dear friend of mine. Uh, we've not only uh, were on the founding board of the AAW together, we've visited every summer. Uh, Leo generally has vacationed in the Thousand Islands. He usually stops here on his way through. We go up there and stay at his cottage with him uh, often. And uh, so I've known him over a long period of time. And so his pieces blend many medias, natural wood, paint. He's a master of paint. He brings an artist's hand to paint. Found objects, uses lots of them in his work and craftsmanship that takes your breath away. So Leo, tell us about what you've been doing lately. And oh, <laughs> one further piece is a piece oh, that sits it's in our yeah. hallway uh, is a little table really, has Leo Doyle on the bottom of it. Uh, no date that's, oh, 89, he made this in 89. So what, not 1889. <laughs> been in our hallway ever since gossamer legs you can put a lot of weight on it and it doesn't fail good yeah now we got the yeah, spot there it is. Too for everybody now you're scaring me well your turn to talk and show <laughs> okay. hold up work well look I, di I didn't i thought i'd be extemporaneous about uh, my talk today uh there's an awful lot of uh territory to cover if I had to give a synopsis of everything that I've done for uh, since the late 60s. But uh, maybe you'd be interested to in know how I started in wood turning. And uh, that was is that I was uh, doing a senior thesis where I was going to put on a one man show with 20 tables using 20 different techniques. So one of them turned out to be wood turning. And as I researched a little bit, the only information I could get at the time uh, was industrial arts books. And it showed how uh, tool and die makers, uh, most of them just used a scraping method. And that's what I did. And when I got into the uh, uh, AAW, uh, that's where I came in. And of course, I found out real quick that there's lots of other ways to go. And of course, today, uh, there's just absolutely no comparison. But I would have to say, that the final product is what really counts, you know? It's how you get to that point. And some of the stuff that I made, uh, I wouldn't dare take a gouge at the last minute and try and correct something. Of course, I'd go with the uh, scraper. And uh, so consequently, I made a, a table and a solid wood, stacked laminated uh, wood table turned on the lathe. And all of a sudden I said, hey, this is, I really enjoyed it. That was fun. So then I started thinking about, you know, different possibilities, but not at that particular time. It was more when I started, got my job teaching in California. And uh, <clears throat> so consequently, uh, I came out of a background of two years of architecture. And then I discovered after that two years that uh, sitting at a drawing table, uh, it was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to make what I designed. So furniture was the perfect outlet and the School for American Craftsmen was the perfect school. So it was, everything just sort of fell into place. Once I got into uh, RIT at the School for American Craftsmen, uh, uh, I said, this is it. And uh, thank the Lord for finding it for me, especially in my own hometown. And uh, so I graduated. I uh, went out to uh, Cal State San Bernardino, got a job out there, and uh, started a wood program. And uh, it was part of the educational uh, credential program at first. And then we turned it into a fine arts department and uh, had a concentration in uh, uh, studio woodworking. And uh, never looked back and, and did it for 37 years, enjoyed every minute of it. The worst thing about teaching at the university level is committee meetings. You know, that's, a, that, that's what drives you nuts in the politics, of course. Teaching is the uh, dessert. And so, um, uh, let's see, after that, 
uh, getting with the AAW was another uh, big break in my life, uh, meeting Ernie and uh, all the other people that were involved with it. And <clears throat> uh, consequently, I've lost touch with a lot of them uh, because I just uh, hit the 8-0. And uh, the worst thing that happened to me, and probably if I'm going to leave you with any message at all at the end of this thing, is that be sure that you uh, have dust protection. Uh, I not only have shortness of breath, but I'm on three inhalers for emphysema, coped problems, breathing. And it all stems from, uh, I didn't have to wear a mask and breathing students work for so many years, plus my own work. And plus living in Southern California and smog capital of the world, um, uh, it caught up with me and uh, it's not fun. So uh, although I have it under control, uh, it is limiting and somewhat in terms of exercise and things like that, but I'll survive it all. So uh, you have some work to show us. Pardon? You have some work to show us. I do. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a jewelry box. And uh, I probably made around 40 of these jewelry boxes. And uh, again, turn in the lathe, there's my assistant. And uh, I sort of developed the whole idea of a drawer and wood turning. And um, so uh, it's out of my favorite wood, Honduras mahogany and uh, little carved uh, poles on there, a flower at the top and bottom. And it's about 22 inches in diameter. Wow. Hold on a second. Like a let's, let's see if we got questions. Anybody got a question about this? All right. <laughs> on you go, Leo. I'm amazed. That's a really impressive piece. So what year was that? Uh, that would be in the uh, 80s. I think I saw something like that in the first fine woodworking biennial design book. That could have very well have been. Yes. Well, terrific. Very well then. What Did you, you say that the poles, it? the poles are turned uh, wood as well? Yeah, they're, they're uh, turned wood and then carved. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. For the little piece of ebony in, uh, for the center part there. And what's the yellow insert there? That is, uh, when I turn it, uh, I recess it and then I cover a piece of masonite with um, suede. Okay. And then that fits down in, nice tight fit. And the drawers uh, also, once I pull that blank out, I turn it as a solid piece of wood. And uh, once I pull that out, then I turn that as well. And then the little holes obviously are for rings or earrings and stuff like that. Okay. So what, so, lathe, what lathe are you working on? If it's if you can turn 22 inch diameter. Well, it, uh, it, our, at uh, my school, I had a student make me one so that I could turn up to 24 inches on the inboard. I tried the outboard, but we didn't have proper stand and all the rest of that stuff. It just didn't, you know, it just wasn't in our vocabulary at the time, you know. Now, God, you can do almost anything. Now I got made it large, He made it large enough to do that. I got a raise hand here from Judy Stone. You got a question, Judy? Yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about how you how you did the drawer, please? Uh, the drawer is think of it as a um, solid piece of wood. And then I glue up on uh, a top and a bottom to two sides. So there's four pieces surrounding that blank piece of wood, which is the drawer. And <clears throat> I put wax on there, but I don't wipe the wax off. It uses it as a friction and I've never had a drawer fly out and I would turn the shape and then uh, I take a thick felt and a mallet and knock that blank out and then I fabricate the drawer from there. Wow. Does that answer your question? Well, not, not entirely. Um, <laughs> so how many pieces uh, go into this, this final piece? Well, there's a, the top piece, two side pieces, and the bottom piece. Then the middle piece is the drawer. But I do take it out of one uh, piece of wood and uh, 
you know, cut it one after the other so most of the grain will match. Which you're and also, when I took, you, you're, well, using the wood, you're using the wood that doesn't have a strong grain pattern also. Uh, well, it, it's Honduras mahogany, and I don't know, some, some is strong grain, some isn't. This was more straight grain, I'll admit. Easier to deal with in the long run, in terms of warping and stuff like that. And then the lid is just uh, is another piece of wood. Same thing. You're pretty now, amazing. Reason... Thank you. Pardon? You said thank you. It's pretty amazing. Okay. Thank you very much. I got a raise yeah. from Barry also. Barry, you got a question? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm wondering, could we see the backside, uh, you know, how the, the fourth piece, if you will, behind the drawer was put in? Yeah, that was uh, done. That, what I do is I would bandsaw the same curve and then uh, taper the edges and then just glue it back in to the back. And once I got the drawer out, I'd make the back piece from the turning and then glue that in. Okay, okay. thank you. Yep. Very clever. And uh, here's a table, this I call the hors d'oeuvre table. And it's made out of purple heart and oak. And uh, I've had this around for a long time, but uh, it functions well and it's always fun to bring it out to a group as a piece. Put together a lot of pieces of uh, furniture type turnings with uh, double ended screws, you know, so the thing still comes apart. Very clever. The design on top, I uh, actually drilled holes of uh, different uh, sizes. So you can put toothpicks and skewers like with shrimp and pineapples on it? Exactly. You can do anything you want. But uh, I did mostly uh, cheese and olives. Very clever. Okay. Now, Ernie upstaged me with, uh, this is the first one that I ever did of uh, my little tripod table. And uh, this particular one is made out of sugar pine and maple. I painted the maple black. Uh, one of the neat things about it, and let me see if I can get down, is that the curve of the bottom forms the angle for the uh, legs. And uh, so that made it uh, pretty convenient. And so I made quite a few of those and gave those away as gifts. But I'll admit that I had a write up on this particular piece in the uh, uh, Boston Globe or whatever the name of the newspaper was. The, and they panned it for uh, not being able to support anybody's weight. And of course, my argument was that when you see the pointed uh, uh, feet like this, uh, nobody should sit on it. And your, your brain would tell you, don't sit on this table. But I put those pointed feet on there so it would stay, be stable on a rug. Okay, now here's another jewelry box. This is when I did a series of painted boxes using twigs. So are those and, twigs glued around the edge of the turning and can you open yeah. the work? I sit down at a uh, belt sander and just flatten a little bit of them and then glue them on. So let me pull a drawer out here. This will give you a better look. Nice. So that worked out pretty well. And then here's the lid. Very nice. Thank you. The bird, the story behind the bird is pretty, uh, it goes back to, I took a sabbatical leave to study folk art in Nova Scotia. And <clears throat> there's these three brothers that made furniture and they were very popular stuff. It was very crude but uh, very popular, lively painted and everything else like that. And I really enjoyed it. But I remember one of the brothers saying that, and he says, I had a rocking chair in a show and uh, nobody bought it. He says, uh, what I did was I threw a bird on it and I sold it the next day. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got two great fans here. We're gonna do a couple <laughs> questions. Mike Peace, you got a question? Yeah, so if I understand going back to the drawer, essentially that's it's cut out like a bandsaw box. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, except, I got it. Except, now. 
except that I, uh, yeah, the edge, you see the bottom part of this particular jewelry box, the bottom part was fabricated. The only parts that I uh, turned were the, the top part and the lid. But this bottom part was all fabricated and then just bandsawed. You're absolutely right. Okay, I've got another question from Barry. Sure. Yeah, I was curious about the, when I first saw it appear on the camera, I thought you had like a, meta a dull metallic finish. Can you just say a few words about the finish on that? Yeah, the finish is uh, a light green and then a uh, crackle finish when crackle was popular and then the dark green on top. So then the light green came through. The fact the, uh, the color of the drawer is the original paint and the paint on top is a darker green, but then the light green came through when the paint crackled. Very nice. Okay. And does the lid on this one lift off like the other one? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Like that. Oh, all right. Brilliant stuff. Okay. Oh, now, oh, any, okay, more. Well, this, this was the first piece that I made. It looks like something out of uh, 1945 came out of an airplane. But uh, this was the first piece I did with drawers. And uh, I keep it around because uh, it was a turning point, one of the turning points of uh, my work. I have a couple of the pieces here that are, were turning points in my work. So this one, uh, again, were pieces and uh, it was, I called it a ring chest. So in here, you can see I drill a hole in, then a hole up from the bottom. And that's how you can go in and, and use that to pull it in and out. Now this, these, I didn't put a back on this because that, again, I was at the beginning stages of seeing what's going on. So you have to adjust it back to, we've, we've to lost, normal. We've lost the picture here. Yeah, now you're back to it. Yeah. Okay. Now a little stiller if you can. It uh, makes us a little bit seasick. I got another question from Mike Peace. Okay. No, mine was answered. I should have okay. lowered that. Uh... Okay. Okay, that's out of walnut, that piece there. And what's the blue glowing thing underneath it? Uh, well, I uh, refreshed it with some uh, furniture oil, and then my wife didn't want me to uh, mess up the our uh, the the, uh, the blue Table, tablecloth. Tablecloth, exactly. So I just set that on there, so it wouldn't do it leach ah. into there. Yeah. Okay, well, here's uh, three turned figures. And uh, these were a representative of some older wood turners I met. The only one on the left that I can remember is Jake Brubaker, Reverend Jake. And the other two, uh, the middle one was a dairy farmer. I can't think of his name, I'm sorry, that lived in Pennsylvania. And he used to do the uh, fairs uh, during the summer and he would demonstrate wood turning. And then the other guy in the far right, he, uh, he turned 50,000 uh, little goblets with a ring on them, turned ring. And he sold them to the whole trade down in uh, Pigeon Forge and uh, that whole area. So uh, I decided I would try a piece of where all the elements of the people were turned. So that's, that's how that turned out. Boy, those are great. Sort of fun. Mm. The, the middle guy isn't Palm, Palmer Sharpless, is it? No. Palmer was tall, but it's not Palmer, no. Yeah, yeah. I'll get those names to you sometime, Ernie. Now, here's another turning point piece for me. This one, I had a, a number of different shows and written up in different spots, but this is a sugar bowl with a spoon carved in the lid. <laughs> and <clears throat> the way this works, you get your sugar out that way. It's really more of a showpiece than anything else, although it does function. And uh, <clears throat> the reason why it, uh, it just caught people's eye for some reason, they really liked it. But what I discovered was a lot of my work seemed to go a lot better, gotten every show that I ever wanted to get into by having a piece do more than just be turned. In other words, it had a, a dual function. So this would hold sugar, but it also had a spoon so you could spoon out the sugar. What year was and this, uh, 
Leo? When was this? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say 76. Okay. Because it was in the California design show. Yeah, I think that's where I saw it, actually. Uh, oh, did you? Okay. And uh, so that I'm... Um, uh, uh, I was lucky to come across that piece. And then the next one that I got a lot of publicity for is a candle holder. And the candle holder has a little drawer for matches. Uh -huh. So that's, that's uh, one thing that I did with it. So I, I figured those, these pieces here sort of represent what I've done. I've made everything from a gun cabinet to all sorts of tables and uh, things like that. But recently, I haven't been making anything. Uh, we've been uh, snowbirds with upstate New York at the Thousand Islands and then back to California. And we just sold our cottage and that's where I had my shop. My shop is all packed away, but I, uh, we're, we're planning on moving fairly soon. And I'm going to open a new shop, but I'm the only tool I think I'm going to have that's plugged in is a bandsaw. And I'm going to do everything by hand tools. And if I do do a lathe, I'm going to get, you know, uh, maybe a trendle, uh, you know, something, a spring load, loaded lathe or something like that. But anyways, that's my representative group for you guys. That's a great show, Leo. Thank you so very much. Before right. we let you go and go on to something else, I just, I'm going to poll and see if we got any more questions or comments for you. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll just make a, a, a comment that uh, having been to both their home in San Bernardino to uh, uh, the, the uh, 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 university and to Leo's cottages, plural, in the Thousand Islands many times, uh, you just can't believe just everything in the, the, the building has art attached to it and craftsmanship. And uh, you would sit and look out at freighters coming up and down the Thousand Islands uh, and above the uh, series of glass doors uh, on their porch was a found boat or covered with those birds and above and below it were all these fishes that he carved out that was like a school of fish uh, flowing through it. And it was just breathtaking. Yeah, I think maybe that helped me sell the cottage. <laughs> Did it go with the cottage? No, no, they wouldn't pay the money for it. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> not going to give it away. <laughs> Leo, what a pleasure. Thank, thank you very much for this little tour of your work. Oh, you're entirely welcome. It's good to see you again, John. I hope you stick around for the rest of the hour and we've got uh, sure. you're glad to. Up.